Okay. Um, I did get to Julian and Pauline's seminar, and I, I was really interested in how kind of tightly defined their question was and um, the theoretical background they had to this investigating cultural models that are produced in existing pedagogies. Um, I, th I felt that that day we, we discussed mathematical identities and then on the train home I was starting to think, well, what are these mathematical identities that exist? I mean, is it that we've got identities and a little part of it is a mathematical identity and is there a French identity and a geography identity? And I felt this was kind of fallacious and that, that it couldn't be the case that there were mathematical identities that were part of a person's own narrative, or not necessarily the case. That, that one had one's own narrative of a mathematical identity. Um, but I felt that that's kind of what we had been discussing and, um, and that maybe this was part of our work as maths educators, that in discussing what could be, what we thought were good mathematical identities, ones that we wanted to be offered in the classroom, ones that were maybe um, offered um, things that we saw desirable but also empowering or that weren't exclusive. Uh, that we were doing our own identity work. We were defining what, we, what it was to belong to a field of maths educators and what, um, what kind of practices we thought came into being successful mathematics education and what didn't. Um, however, and I think Steve said this in his presentation, students' identity work doesn't have to involve maths centrally. Um, and we've really... I've, been observing in classrooms and I've seen in year 12 actually teachers working really hard to offer students ways in which maths can become personal and saints and things like well this maths is is um, this is graph this is very descriptive this is about art you can be this kind of mathematician and I've seen the teachers doing the work to offer um, students ways into to using maths as part of their identity rather than having a separate mathematical identity um, so um, I'm interested really in, in how the teachers do that and, and what makes the students take it on and what makes the students say, oh, you can offer me that, but I'm not interested. Um, and that also linked with Tamara's ideas about relationships being at the foundation of teaching. Uh, maybe teachers were offering students relationships with themselves through mathematics. Um, that was it, back to you. <laughs> The third seminar, which was at Edinburgh. Now, Cathy didn't get to this seminar, so most of the thoughts from this one are mine. So I will talk mainly about that second presentation by McIntyre, Griffiths, and Hamil Hamilton. And their presentation was actually entitled, Who's Mathematics? Who's Curriculum? And for me, when you start asking those sorts of questions, then you necessarily bring into the, into the equation who is mathematics for? Which, again, when you think about ability grouping and so on, that, that has implications there. What I was, what one of the ideas I took away from that seminar was there they gave a quote from Maggie McClure, suspend your belief in the innocence of words. And for me, that had resonance, especially in mathematics classes, when much of the talk is located in the teacher. And m what students have to do is listen. And when you listen, what is it, what is it you, have, you hear? It, it sort of suggested an inclination of teachers, perhaps, to believe that what they say is what the students hear. And, and, and for me, this was important in teaching and learning, especially in maths, where imprecision is less allowed in the interpretation of words and language than in perhaps other subject areas. But Kathy, to this, Kathy says. <laughs> um, I just I thought it was interesting thinking about ambiguity. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that ambiguity is forbidden in maths. I think that it's challenged. It exists, but it's challenged. Um, and that sometimes it's, it's, it's there when teachers say, this is a hard question, but they go on. It may be a hard question because ambiguity in how you proceed with it, but they go on to make it easy by taking away choices and by taking away ambiguity. And so some of the work, the relationship work that teachers do about instilling confidence in pupils is about reducing ambiguities um, and challenging ambiguities. Over. 
we're going to move on quickly now. Um, in Cardiff, we really enjoyed Cardiff, didn't we? In Cardiff, I thought there were um, some really interesting discursive identities on offer and it kind of got out of mathematics. I like Valerie's story of the video go game winner and Mark's story about Louise's mathematics. Um, and I thought, you know, these were identity. The idea was that these identities were kind of constructed through discourse. Um, I thought about making stories. I thought about Foucault, say, Foucault saying there are only some things you can say. There are some things that go into stories. So there's a cultural knowledge of what you can make a story out of, drawing on education and drawing on relationships and emotions. Um, and to some extent, I thought Louise's story of, well, it's Mark's story of Louise's story of mathematical anxiety was a familiar one in school maths. And, and we responded in familiar ways that we'd done before. Um, and then again on the train home, I thought if it was that um, negative experience, if it was that repressive experience to be studying mathematics, what was the pleasure in telling it? What was the productive part for Louise in telling that story about her awful mathematics experiences? And, and then we have to ask what's the productive part for Mark in telling Louise's story? Um, so it was just interesting, again I was reading Foucault at the time, so what was, what was the productive part of that? Um, Valerie's talk suggested these stories tell themselves, that you know, they are part of the discourse. Does that mean the mass has to tell itself as hard and exclusive? How can we change that? Um, I liked it when um, somebody said, Steve, I think, that identity nowadays is not only a project of the self, but play with the self. Um, so maybe that allows more positions to be experimented with in the classroom, that students, by being more playful with what's in their identities, can take on new ideas and have new mathematical narratives, um, which made me think about my research. Um, maybe they would be happy to have different mathematics identities in different situations. Um, and again, back to the previous one, Julian Williams and Pauline had talked about having social and maths talk going on together in the maths classroom. Again, it seemed to offer possibility, uh, abilities about how math practices might be played with and, and made, more, um, made more creative. Um, hand over to Seminar 5. Um, just, just before we move on to Seminar 5, I, I, my thing with when students are given many more ways to be successful is, is, is the whole idea of offering students choices in the where the types of teaching on offer and and that's for me if in types of teaching that s is very important because then you give more students as joe bola has said more ways to be successful and in the whole idea of changing the discourse of maths as hard perhaps we should think of working somewhat within that discourse and not necessarily changing it but adding to it in terms of maths may be perhaps more difficult than some other subjects but it is entirely doable if you have these choices available in the ways you can learn the mathematics. And the last seminar at um, Sheffield, what, again Cathy didn't make it to this one but my main what I came away, one of the main things I came away with from that seminar was the whole, the psychoanalytical strand, which I must confess has been a strand that I have had some difficulty wrapping my mind around, actually. But I thought that usually when the presenters gave their perspectives on this strand, they tended to use stories. And I just thought that these stories seemed very much gendered rather than anything else than classed or anything. If, if we were given the stories anonymously, I think we would have been better able to put them into gender brackets than into um, class or ethnicity brackets or anything else. And I uh, think... Now, we have to apologise to everybody whose work we have crudely, not even summarised, we just put what we thought they'd said, not what they'd actually said. I said, or we remembered they said. So that was, um, and, and finally, we did actually meet at last, quite by accident, we discovered we were both at the cricket on Sunday. <laughs> so, <laughs> supporting different teams. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's the end of our journey. <laughs>